cluster, the OIDs difficile, C. diff for short, can be a bedeviling problem, uh, which is a toxin-based infection picking up residence in the colon due to a disturbed uh, normal bowel flora, usually after antibiotics. I'm Paul Arwitter uh, with Medscape Infectious Diseases, and recurrent C. diff or relapsing C. diff uh, just can be a bedeviling problem for a subset of patients and their clinicians alike. This can happen uh, uh, up to a quarter of patients who receive the oral vancomycin drug, perhaps lower uh, if you're using the newer agent, fidaxomycin. But uh, these relapses are indeed frequent. And having trained at Johns Hopkins under John Bartlett, he had always taken the approach that after the second and always after the third relapse, an extended uh, course of oral therapy with vancomycin uh, can help get patients out of trouble by a so-called extended pulse method where you would take it for perhaps four to six weeks and gradually reduce the dose since uh, vancomycin is present in such high concentrations uh, intraluminally without absorption. Of course, this uh, has been done with fidaxomycin. Not certain it works much better than vancomycin, but that drug often uh, has hurdles because of insurers uh, not approving it uh, because of expense. So uh, what other uh, courses of uh, therapies are there? There's bezlotoximab. I've used this a few times. It's an infusion of a monoclonal targeting uh, uh, C. diff toxin B. There are challenges to this one-time infusion uh, regarding uh, cost, uh, logistics of setting up the infusion, and insurance and approval for that. But uh, what I wanted to speak more about was uh, fecal microbial transplants, uh, so-called FMTs, which in recent years uh, have certainly held a record of having um, a, a different avenue that could try to lower the potential for relapse rates uh, with success rates uh, of uh, usually 80 to 90 percent. However, uh, in the past few years, there have been some uh, serious safety signals from a transmission of dangerous pathogens, often with drug resistance. But I'm pleased to say there is uh, some upcoming uh, newer fecal microbiome products. They're coming in a bit of a fast and furious fashion. So I thought I'd spend a few minutes speaking about these. Uh, Open Microbiome is an investigational product that has not received FDA approval. It's been around for some time. It's from screen donors um, who, uh, uh, can then be in, uh, used in either upper or lower uh, GI applications. And the company cites about an 84% rate using uh, this product. Now, there are two new FDA approved products that I thought are worth knowing about. We're a little uncertain of where they land and they've just been approved recently. The first one is a product from the Faring Corporation uh, which goes by Fecal Microbiota Live, GSLM. And this is a single infusion given by Enema from qualified and screened donors uh, with the idea that this mainly represents bacter, bacter, uh, bacteroides. Now, they did a phase two trial, but then did some modeling using Bayesian analyses, uh, which I think uh, convinced the FDA to approve this product and found that the success rate there uh, in people with uh, multiple relapses was 70.6% uh, compared to 57.5% uh, placebo. So the estimated treatment effect was 13.1%. Uh, and of those that did respond, over 90% were kept uh, free of relapse over a six month period. Uh, the other product uh, also approved is from the Ceres Corporation, previously called SER109, now called Fecal Microbiota Spores Live VRPK. Unlike the other product, this is orally administered, uh, taking four uh, caps daily uh, for three days. And again, our derived um, uh, firmicutes. Uh, that also have been appropriately uh, screened and sterilized, uh, or I should say free of 
potential pathogens. That phase three RCT was published in the New England Journal and found that 12% of those taking the, this product um, uh, had a relapse compared to 40% placebo, which is about the range which we tend to see often in uh, people that have had multiple relapses. And the safety profile was similar to placebo. Uh, the, how people might use all of these, I would say the uh, FDA imprimatur certainly I think is something that will be attractive. These, I think, will be priced fairly expensively um, uh, in the, um, you know, under $10,000 range. Uh, and, you know, the one is a, a rectal infusion. It's one time that does create logistics. Interestingly, it could be a billable procedure uh, for clinicians to employ, um, but uh, is sort of a one and done. Uh, but I think the uh, uh, ease of oral administration, uh, no doubt, will also be very appealing. Both of these are given after completing a course of treatment for a relapse so as not to interfere with the uh, uh, microbiome product. I'll also just briefly mention that a paper has just come out for a, yet another um, uh, 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 microbiome product called VE303. Uh, Louis published this in the JAMA uh, earlier this year. Uh, this product was based on eight strains of commensal clostridia given, uh, again, orally in a phase two trial. Interestingly, this also worked about the same as the oral uh, uh, product already FDA approved. It, uh, this had a response rate of 13.8% in the high dose group uh, compared to 45.5% um, relapse rate in the placebo group. So uh, I think there is some excitement uh, here, um, hopefully with safer products that can be more reliable, although they each have some uh, uh, concerns and logistics about uh, getting the products to people uh, safely. And of course there is the expense, but anything that can be done to help improve on uh, these patients, which once they get into the multiple relapse phase is very difficult to sort of turn around um, and I, I think uh, commercialized products will certainly, hopefully, uh, become a bit more mainstream. So thanks so much for listening, and certainly we'll see how these uh, tend to be utilized in the next uh, months to year or two.